Hi everyone. Here we're going to name some cycloalkanes. So this first one here, we have a cycloactane, and I'm going to start with this carbon as the number one carbon. Now, if I number the carbons going clockwise, I'm going to end up with a substituent, well, carbon number one, carbon number four, five, and carbon number seven. Now, if I number the opposite direction, I'm going to end up with a substituent on, of course, carbon 1, 3, 5, and 6. So this will be the best way to number the carbons. Okay, so what I have is I have a 1, 1 dibromal. And I have a 3-butyl. I have a 5-fluoro. And a 6-methyl. And again, we have a cyclooctane. So when I name this, I have to make sure that these are in alphabetical order. So I'm going to start with the 1-1-dibromo. One, one, and then the 3-butyl, 5-fluoro, 6-methyl, cyclooctane. Okay, let's go to this structure here. And I have a cyclopentane. And we have a methyl, an ethyl, and a propyl group. And we have uh, the substituents in um, one, two, three locations. So, well, which one do we start with? We can either uh, number this one, carbon one, or number uh, the carbon with the methyl group, carbon one. And what we're going to do in this case is number the um, carbon bonded to the methyl or ethyl group as number one. And we'll go around like this. One, we have a one ethyl, a two propyl, and a three methyl. So again, we have to name this. The substituents have to be in alphabetical order. So we have a one ethyl, a three methyl, and a 2-propyl cyclopentane. Okay, let's go to the next one. And here we have uh, two methyl groups. We have a propyl group here and a butyl group on the side here. So let's see, how, how am I going to number this? Um, again, I want my substituents to have uh, the lowest possible numbers. So I'm going to start this one as carbon number one, okay? Because that's going to give me two substituents on carbon one. And I can, you know, how do I number? Am I going to go clockwise or counterclockwise? Well. I have the um, butyl group in the three position if I go counterclockwise and the uh, propyl group in the five position. Now, if I number this the other way here, I'm going to have the propyl group in the three position and the uh, butyl group in the five position. So I'm going to go alphabetically this time. So I'm going to number like this. So what I have is a 1, 1 dimethyl. And I have a 3 oops, butyl and a 5 propyl. And again, we have a cyclohexane here. So I'm going to name this 3-butyl. Uh, butyl has alphabetical priority. 
and that'll be one, one, dimethyl, five, propyl, cyclohexane. Ah, this one here is a little different. We, um, we have two rings. We have a, um, a six-member ring and a three-member ring. So in this case here, what we're going to do is we'll name the uh, six-member ring as a cyclohexane and the as a cyclopropyl group. So what we have is cyclopropyl cyclohexane. And finally, um, this last one here, um, we have <clears throat> we have uh, two chlorine substituents and two ethyl substituents. And of course we have a cyclopentane. So let's see, how uh, do we start numbering here? Well, I, um, I'm going to start with um, the chlorine. And so I do I number uh, this way, one, two, three, four, or this way, one, two, three, four, five. So in this case, I, I, again, I want the lowest possible numbers on this, for the substituents. So I'm going to number this way. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. So that's going to give me a one, four <clears throat> dichloral. And I have a two, three diethyl, and of course we have a cyclopentane. So the name of this would be 1,4-dichloro-2,3-diethylcyclopentane.